Hi guys, Brendan from TAT. I just want to show you a quick one here where the TAT search function has, has saved my butt, basically saved me hours of a, a little bit of a curly code description on a Mitsubishi Pajero. Okay guys, so just a check engine light uh, customer in. So we've got a Mitsubishi Pajero, um, lights intermittently coming on and off for them now. I've read a code, PO125, um, insufficient coolant temp for closed loop operation. Now, something very odd that I've never seen before, I go to the freeze frame of that data and it actually lists a completely different code under freeze frame. So it lists a PO170, uh, which is essentially bank one lean. Now, keep in mind, I don't see that code anywhere. If I read codes in OBD, Mitsubishi specific with either my, my G-Scan, my Snap-on, you know, go through a list of scan tools, I, I never get that code logged, the PO170. Um, always just the, the PO125 coolant temp, but when I go to the freeze frame for that PO125, the freeze frame relates to a PO170. And it, it definitely does look like it's running lean. It's got massively high fuel trims on bank one, and um, the coolant temp looks fine. So, okay, what's going on? I've never seen that, it's very odd. So, um, pretty early in, you know, after I checked that the coolant temperature sensor was reading all right, you know, wiggle the sensor, all that kind of thing, no reason to suspect um, anything to do with coolant temp at this moment. Um, I put in the search bar of TAP PO125. Now that's going to search absolutely everything we've ever done. Magazine articles, technical assistance, um, jobs that have actually been logged in as repair solutions. And in this case, I was actually able to find a Triton where someone had had a similar situation. Now this was a technical assistance case, so it hadn't, hasn't been logged as a repair solution yet because we've got thousands of them where we try and get through them. And um, we want to try and make sure that we're putting up stuff that is, is verified in some cases, you know, when they're a bit weird and quirky. So now that I've had a similar situation, I'll definitely get that up there as a, a fairly common issue I'd call on these Mitsubishis. So, what I have found is, um, looking at my live data when I'm watching the oxygen sensors, I'll bring it up on the scan tool here and I'll show you what I'm, what I'm facing. So here's our oxygen sensors. Now this car is red hot, it's been running for a long time, and um, we're most concerned with uh, bank one, as we had a PO170 bank one lean. So I'm, I'm looking at the top graph, bank one sensor one, and we're also paying particular attention to the third graph, bank two sensor one, because that's a, a great known good being a V6, we've got that luxury. So one thing to notice already, bank one doesn't look as good as bank two. So um, two things that, that concern me, um, the maximum that this oxygen sensor has ever reached was 760 millivolt. Now keep in mind, um, that max includes, I've already taken this for a drive, wide open throttle down the road. Um, you can see bank two was able to achieve 940 millivolts, as I would expect. Um, we generally want to see an oxygen sensor being able to read um, within a, a range of about 900 to 100 millivolts. I can see that um, bank two has dropped down to zero um, for a, a point. I did notice when that happened, whereas bank one, I was noticing it's dropping down to zero quite regularly. Now, I've tested the heater circuit, so I've just done a quick resistance test on bank one sensor one, and I have about nine ohms there, which is reasonable for a heater, and I also have a good 12 volt power supply um, going to that. So, or 12 volt and earth, sorry, for the heater for bank one sensor one. So I'm not going to um, bother getting an amp clamp and that kind of thing for the heater. Um, I, I believe that we just have an O2 that is, is giving a poor signal. Now I've reset my data now, I got back out and, and in, because I think it, it illustrates much better now that you know, we're just sitting at idle, just how lazy Bank 1 Sensor 1 is compared to Bank one, uh, bank 2 Sensor 1. So we see quite a nice sweep on Bank 2, 800 to 60 millivolts using our max and min, whereas Bank 1, a maximum of 600, a minimum of zero, we're getting some dropouts all the way to zero, which I, I do not want to see. Um, when I feed propane into this, I, I can't do it with um, not enough hands with the camera and whatnot, but I fed propane and bank two, um, go, bank two sensor one goes rich up around 950 millivolts or so. Um, we struggle to get much movement out of bank one. It only reached about 650 or so. So that's how I'm um, proving to myself that it doesn't, um, it, it's not a fueling issue. It's not a, an actual running issue. It's a sensor that's not reading correctly. So I've got a new bank one sensor one oxygen sensor in there now. Um, this is just from a cold startup. So I'm quite happy with how quickly you see the voltage rose there um, from startup. So the heaters uh, are working quite well. And we can see that now with this fluctuation, it's starting to go into closed loop. Um, so already I'm starting to see uh, more activity from bank one sensor one, even though it's not completely um, heat, uh, not completely hot yet. Um, and I reckon already if I give this a blip, throttle, 
you can see we're getting a much better result um, where before bank one sensor one was unable to even get over 600 millivolts so once this warms up i'm sure we'll start to get uh, more fluctuation you know as that closed loop system takes over but i'm quite happy with uh, bank one sensor one now so I hope that helps you out guys. As I said, I'll get that logged in as a repair solution um, for the Mitsubishi. So by the look of it, these 3.8 litre um, Mitsubishi petrol engines, um, if you're ever getting that PO125 um, for coolant temperature too low for closed loop operation, really what it should be saying is, hey, I've had some kind of issue with closed loop. And so in the end, this one was an oxygen sensor. Thanks guys.